when you use Sublime Text long enough, eventually you might run into a situation where it starts acting a little less than Sublime. A feature that used to work suddenly doesn't or doesn't work the way that you remember it working. You read about a feature, but you can't find it. Something along those lines. If you go ask for help in the official forum or the Discord, someone might ask you, have you tried reverting to a fresh state? What does it actually mean to revert Sublime Text to a fresh state? And how do you do that? In this video, we're going to cover that very topic. Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this video on reverting your copy of Sublime Text to a fresh state. Now, as always, if you're finding these videos in any way useful or helpful, I would love to know about it. So please use those buttons down below to thumb, subscribe, and share as you deem appropriate. And if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video or any of my videos or a Sublime Text topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd. The topic of today's video, though, is reverting your Sublime Text to a freshly installed state. Now, that is actually perhaps a little more complicated than you might think at first blush, because you might think in order to put it back to a fresh state, all you have to do is uninstall it and reinstall it. And as we'll see, that is not in fact the case. In fact, that does more or less nothing. There are very few problems that just uninstalling and reinstalling will be able to solve for you. Now, the reason for that is, in use, Sublime saves various information about how you use Sublime Text, such as configuration settings you've made, key bindings you've changed or added, packages you've installed, in a special location known as the data directory. And that directory is outside of the installation directory of Sublime Text. That is, it's not in the same place where the binary is and where the packages that ship with Sublime when you install it are stored. So uninstalling and reinstalling doesn't touch those particular files. And as a result, you end up with Sublime just behaving exactly the same as it did before you did the reinstall. Now, the reason for this is, you know, many fold. Uh, for one, it allows you to reinstall Sublime or more appropriately update it by doing a fresh install over top of an existing copy without worrying about changing any of your configuration files at all. It also means that if you're running backups, you only have to back up your configuration for Sublime as well as your other applications on your operating system without having to back up the application itself. That's perhaps not as interesting as it could be because you could always download Sublime and install it again. It's the way you've customized Sublime that is of the most importance. And it's very likely in this day and age that there may be multiple people using the same computer. And if all of those people want to use sublime text, they might want it configured differently from each other. One person might be a web developer while another is a C developer. They're going to have different package needs and different configuration desires, maybe even different color schemes and fonts. So if that information was stored in the application directory, then everybody that used sublime on the same computer would share that information and that's perhaps less desirable. So the very first time that you run Sublime after you've installed it for the first time, it creates what we call the data directory. It's not really a directory called data, but we'll get into that in just a bit. And inside of this directory, it puts things like your configuration files and packages that you have installed. Now that data directory is actually stored inside of your home directory. And this is true whether you're on Windows as I am here or Mac OS or Linux. On all of these operating systems, the data directory is stored somewhere in your home directory. So in order to revert Sublime to a fresh state, you need to remove that data directory. What you would actually do is rename it to something different than it is. And then when Sublime starts afresh the next time, it won't see it there and it will do what it did the first time, create that empty directory and put you back in a completely fresh state. Now there are actually instructions for this on the web. If we jump over to the web browser, we're at sublimetext.com and over on the top right of the page, there's a link labeled support. And clicking on that brings you to the support page. And one of the top links here is the documentation, specifically the documentation index for Sublime Text. This is the official documentation. 
And inside this is the, of course, official documentation for Sublime. It covers a variety of things. And one of the items down here in miscellaneous is reverting to a freshly installed state. So let's click on that. Now the contents of this page is basically going to be telling you what I'm telling you in this video, so we're not going to read it here. But the reason we've come here is to point out that there are set locations, as we can see at the top of the page, for where this information is stored. And those locations are always in your home directory. So what I could do, because I'm on Windows, is take this path and copy it. And of course, if you were on Linux or Mac OS, you could do, copy the appropriate path and browse there in a file browser or a terminal application. Here on Windows, I'm going to use the Windows Run dialog, and we can see this information is in here. And when I click OK, it opens a folder. Now the folder it's actually opened is called Sublime Text 3, and inside of it there's an installed packages folder, a packages folder, a lib folder, and a local folder. This folder, the contents of this, are what we refer to as the data directory. So the official instructions are a little bit unclear in this because they tell you to you need to change your data directory, but there's not actually a directory named data here. There's a reason for that which we'll cover in just a few minutes. But when you're using Sublime, this packages folder is, of course, as we've seen in other videos where your unpacked packages uh, are stored. And one of those is the user package where your preferences are stored, which includes the package control settings, which includes, of course, all of the packages that you have installed. And up here in the installed packages folder is the Sublime package file for packages that you have installed, which we can see there are a few of them here. And these other directories are for other things. The local directory stores things like your session information, how to restore Windows uh, after you have closed and restarted Sublime, your license key, and, and things of that nature. And that lib directory is for future use in Sublime Text. So the contents of these four folders, or in particular this Sublime Text 3 folder that contains them all, is what is the data directory and is controlling how Sublime works. So over here in Sublime we can see it looks the way it has looked in a lot of these videos as time has gone on. I can use say the override audit package we covered in a previous video and look at the package report and see that I have uh, installed 15 packages in my unpacked packages folder and eight in the installed packages folder and there are seven dependencies currently. And if I quit Sublime, and you should always quit Sublime before you revert it to a fresh state. Under Windows, this is a necessity. On other operating systems, it might not be, but it's not going to react well if you don't quit Sublime first. And by just coming over here, what I can do is change the name of this directory to something else, like say Sublime Text 3 Old. You could also move this directory out of the way entirely. What you don't want to do is just delete it out of hand. So now that that's being renamed, we'll see that when I restart Sublime, the window doesn't go back into the state that it was in previously. The color scheme is different. It's now using the default theme instead of the adaptive theme. Up in the title bar, we can see that this copy of Sublime is unregistered. It didn't restore the window to the full size. And if I look in the command palette for commands for override audit, they're not there. And as a matter of fact, if I went into the preferences menu, there's no package settings here. And that's because package control isn't even installed. I'd have to come down here and use install package control. So this is truly exactly the fresh state, what we saw the very first time we installed Sublime Text on our system. So when someone asks you, have you tried reverting to a fresh state? What they're really saying is, I don't understand the problem you're having. My copy doesn't work that way. That It doesn't seem like that should be happening to you. It might be one of your packages that's causing a problem. So try reverting to a fresh state. Now, in this fresh state, we have no packages installed. Try to reproduce the problem that you see here. If you can reproduce the problem, then the there's a problem in Sublime and it's going to be easier maybe to figure out what exactly is going on. If the problem no longer happens, then it's one of the packages or plugins that you have installed. And what you would do is slowly reintroduce your old configuration a little at a time. Say, for example, by using your package control settings and slowly moving the installed packages uh, 
setting from one to the other to slowly install new packages and see which one of those packages might be the one that caused the problem. And usually weird problems in Sublime are the result of a package that steals a key binding from another package or which modifies a resource in some way. And Sublime is open enough that it's possible that two packages might conflict with each other. So even though individually those two packages do what you want, if you happen to install both of them, they start playing together in weird, unpredictable ways. And sometimes you don't notice that right away when you've installed a new package and it seems like problems have just spontaneously sprouted out of the blue. So this is a good way of trying to ferret out those sorts of problems. Now, of course, to go back to what we had before, what we would do the opposite. We would, of course, quit Sublime as we did before. And back here in the file folder, we can see there's a new Sublime Text 3 directory. That's because Sub Sublime created a brand new one for me. Now, of course, what you could do is open the new directory in one window, the old directory in another window, and go into your packages user package. And these are your settings. Slowly, one at a time, copy files from here to the new location to see if the problem persists. And in particular, if you're using package control, as we can see here, one of the settings, the settings file for package control, one of the settings in there is the list of packages you've told it to install. So you can take those packages and slowly install them one at a time, figure out what problem you're having. If you want to go back to exactly the way things were before anything happened, it's pretty easy. You can just delete or rename. I'm going to rename this new old because it's going to be the new old folder to take that one away and rename the one that we saved previously back to here. Or of course you could move these directories around. If you moved it away, you could move it back. And now that it's there, as soon as I click, Sublime is back to the state it was in before. It remembered to maximize the window. The theme is correct. It is now registered instead of unregistered. And the command palette has override audit commands in it once again. Now, in fact, there's actually an easier way to get at that path. Remember, there are three different locations here depending on the operating system that you're on. As it turns out, you could actually go into the command palette and say browse packages like this, and that's going to open that packages folder. But if you go up one directory level, we're back at that same location. And this will work regardless of what operating system you happen to be running, whether it's Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Now, with all of this said, there is on Windows actually one extra directory to worry about here. Um, if you're doing something like this, following along with the video on Mac OS or Linux, you might notice there's a couple of folders in here that we're not seeing here on Windows. And if I was to come in here and change this from app data to local app data, keeping the Sublime Text 3, a new window will open and we'll see that here there's a cache folder and an index folder. Now, the index folder stores the symbol index, which is what Sublime uses to power the go to anything functionality when you have files open to quickly jump between symbols and their uses and things of that nature. And the cache is used for a variety of things. Here on Windows, these two folders are stored in the app data local directory instead of regular app data because of the way that Windows can synchronize your user profile amongst machines. These files are local to each machine because they're very big and very easily recreated as needed. On other operating systems, these aren't here. So for a true clear uh, reset of the system, you'd wanna come over here and delete the contents of these two folders uh, as well. You can also back them up uh, if you want to. Now, I said a few minutes ago that there's a reason why the instructions for reverting to a fresh state mention a data directory, but there isn't one actually there. And that's because on Windows, you can choose to install a portable copy of Sublime Text. And the idea behind the portable version is it's in every way I functionally identical to the standard version of Sublime Text, except that it packs its configuration data, that those files we were just looking at, into the same folder that the rest of the app application is in, and that allows you to put Sublime Text as a whole, including your configuration on something like a USB thumb drive, and take it from computer to computer and plug it in, and as soon as you start it, it just immediately picks up the data.
So I that's actually how I run copies of Sublime Text when I'm doing these videos here to keep them distinct from my regular installations of Sublime Text. And how this is done uh, is like this. I'm going to do that same thing we did just a second ago, Preferences Browse Packages. Now, I did a video cut there uh, for just a second to be able to set this back up. But we'll see. When I do that, I hit my Packages folder. And if I go up one folder, all of these directories are in here, including the cache and index. And there's even a folder here, call, or file here, rather, called Keep Me. And this folder up here is called Data. And if we were to look back once further and click in here, this is actually where this copy of Sublime Text is installed. This is a portable copy of Sublime Text on Windows. And when you get that version, that portable version, there's a directory in here named data. And when you run Sublime Text, if there's a folder alongside its binary named data, and on operating systems like Linux, where the file system is case sensitive, the case here matters. And Sublime will use this data directory here as the place to store its configuration instead of those directories we were just looking at off in your home directory. And the directory is called data. That's why this is referred to as the data directory. Now, on the Sublime Text download page, there's an automatic download for the Windows Sublime uh, portable version. You can actually, of course, do this on Mac OS and Linux if you want by finding the appropriate location and creating that directory in there if you wanted to have multiple copies of Sublime Text. And in the case of a portable copy of install, using the paths as we see here wouldn't help you. This probably wouldn't work if you've only ever used a portable copy of Sublime then going to this directory won't exist because it's not there. And if you used a version of Sublime previously and then switched to a portable version, the folders you'll see in this directory will be vastly out of date with reality as far as you can see. No matter what you do in there, it's not going to seem to have any effect. And that's why it might be a good idea to use this browse packages in order to locate the data directory to make sure that you're always finding the correct one. So there we have it, a little bit of a longer video, but a lot of information in there, none of it too complex about how you can take your copy of Sublime Text and put it back to a fresh state. And maybe you want to do that because you're having a problem with something and you're trying to diagnose it, or maybe you just want to wipe everything out and start fresh and try a new set of packages or something along those lines. So I hope you found this uh, helpful. If you have, please use those buttons down below the video to thumb subscribe and share the video with others. And if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video or really any of my videos, you can drop those down in the comment section below or send me a message on Twitter at odatnerd. I'd love to hear from you. Until the next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.